Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Amen. The fifth glorious mystery is the crowning of the Blessed Virgin. Mary, you are crowned Queen of Heaven by your Divine Son. To the great joy of all the saints, obtain for us eternal happiness. Our Father, who art in Heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in Heaven.
Good morning. And welcome again to our historic church of St. Michael the Archangel for this celebration of the fourth Sunday of Easter, Good Shepherd Sunday. Today's Mass intention is in memory of Richard, Raphael, Seraphim Solis, Angelic and Miguel Angel Gonzalez, Jaden Baez, Tony Booth. Today we are reminded that Jesus is the Good Shepherd, committed to caring for his sheep through every danger, difficulty, and trauma. He told his disciples that he would lay down his life for his sheep. Indeed, this is exactly what he did. By laying down his life for our sins, he conquered death and raises us to eternal life with him. Let us allow the risen Lord to guide us to the idyllic pasture of salvation. Today's readings are in page 154 through 158. Our music today is provided by our organist Bob Dylan, by Karen and Narita. Our family joins us via the internet with the technical expertise of Korg and Maher. Serving at altar today is Wilson, and our celebrant today is our pastor, Father Mark Rudd. Please stand as we begin this holy sacrifice of the Mass. Good morning. Please join us in singing our entrance hymn, number 407 in the Green Journey Songbook. shepherd be with you all. Welcome everyone as we gather together to give thanks and praise to our loving God. We do indeed count our many blessings beginning with our salvation in Christ, also counting the many expressions of God's love for us, each, each of us this past week, including the crosses too. We give thanks for those as well. We humbly call to mind now our sins, asking God's pardon and peace. Lord,
Lord Jesus, you raised the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you give us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood to strengthen us in holiness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, lead us all to everlasting life. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, who you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, 
this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. My sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ. Compared to Cleveland, which is considered a pretty small city, but compared to Cleveland, the place that I grew up was considered a small town. And we were taught, just like anybody else, when you cross the street, you know, you need to look both ways. And if you were lucky, you would see an Amish horse and buggy crossing the road. We lived in, in Worcester, Worcester, Ohio. And uh, most small town drivers, not all, you know, are pretty forgiving. If you make a mistake, you know, they'll kind of wave you on and they'll disobey even traffic laws to kind of move you along and be, be kind and all that. This is not in quite as a big of rush as we are here in Cleveland. I, I remember growing up, road rage had not yet been invented and except for somebody maybe putting some lipstick on in the rearview mirror or checking their look, you know, uh, distracted driving hadn't been invented yet either. Um, we were taught in our driver's ed way back, I mean, it was like 1982 or something, to be defensive drivers, you know, to uh, not only concentrate on what you needed to do, but kind of look out for maybe this guy might do this, and maybe this lady might do that, or what have you, but just be on the lookout for others. And as kids, riding bicycles and skateboards, you know, yes, the road was to be respected, but we didn't consider it a place of dangerous aggression where vehicle homicide or vehicle manslaughter was commonplace. You know, if we could do a whole sermon on Christian driving, you know, uh, how does our faith affect our driving? But I mention all of this because of the tragic event that transpired here last Tuesday evening or night at 10.30 p.m. right here on our corner of Kinkle and Scranton, right where we pull out of the parking lot. 45-year-old James Jamel Rodriguez was crossing the street at the corner here, waiting for the city bus coming north from Metro Health, and he wanted to get on, so he's crossing the street to get on the bus. I don't know if he checked, but on the surveillance camera, it showed a white pickup traveling about 45 miles an hour, took him out in a hit and run. And on the camera, it was so sad to watch him, you know, not knowing these were, as he's walking along our old school, that this was going to be his last steps here on this earth. And, and when he was hit, he went on into the lights of the bus and the cars behind, created this big glare, this big ball of light, and he just disappeared into that light. And I'd like to think that James Jamel Rodriguez was hurled into, you know, that perpetual light of eternity emanating from the Father's face that we hear so often about in those near-death experiences. And I want to believe that he was caught in the arms, the strong arms 
of our Good Shepherd. I don't know if anybody saw this morning if there were any flowers or anything over there in that corner, but um, if anybody knows the family, Jamal Rodriguez, let's, let's contact them. Um, Jesus says, I will lay down my life for my sheep, for my own. Unlike a hired man who sees danger like a wolf coming or he flees to save his own life. But Jesus, not just 2,000 years ago, but today, sees danger, oncoming danger, whether it's a wolf, a speeding car, maybe an unjust or unfair accusation or malicious opinions of others, whatever, an illness that threatens our very life. Jesus places himself between that and us as a good shepherd would protect. You know, I, when this happened, I thought of, you know, five years ago, this past March 15th, Camilo, uh, Camilo Gabriel, who always used to sit right next to this pillar with uh, St. Charles dressed in red in the statue, big Camilo Gabriel was crossing West 25th with his wife Wilma to go to a doctor's appointment when he had to push his wife out of the way of an oncoming vehicle that killed him, knocked him through the air, taking his life. He heroically sacrificed his own life to save his wife. I will lay down my life for my own, for the sheep, says Jesus. You know, dangers, tragedies in the streets, but also there are heroic moments, you know, miracles too. I'd like to share with you one that happened in city traffic. An elderly man and a woman standing on the corner of a busy street. They're very old. They have white hair, bent over, shaking hands, you know, unstable. And uh, the light changes. They, they get off the curb together and start across for the other side. The man takes the woman's arm and he holds it tightly to his side as the two begin to shuffle you know, through the standing traffic. And before they get halfway across, you know, the light changes and the cars begin to honk. And the man doesn't waver. He holds his wife's arm with all his strength, keeping his eyes fixed on the pavement in front of him. And they move forward slowly, but finally reaching the other side. They reach the other side of the street together. Now the motorists you know, wanting to get to their destination quickly, they did not see the miracle. They did not see the miracle present here that here was a bond of love that no fear could break, a relationship made, built over decades of loving and understanding, forgiving, trusting, a union that had gained its strength from knowing somebody so well you couldn't tell who was really holding up who because of their shared life together. They were one mind and heart. And this kind of relationship really is a miracle. It doesn't allow this elderly couple to walk any faster or get any younger, but it gives them the courage to live another day in a world that would just bowl them over, brush them aside, or run them, run them over. Use this example of this man walking with his wife across the street the dangerous street, the difficult, busy street, as an image of the Good Shepherd that we celebrate today. Because this is the way that Jesus loves us. This is the kind of bond that our Lord establishes with us. And I think if our prayer life is faltering and it's just very, like, maybe routine or what have you, I think this... Good Shepherd Sunday calls us to a deeper intimacy, oneness with Christ, because he does not love us from the outside coming into our life every now and then to help us with this problem or that problem, like the hired man who works for pay. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, says that he knows his own and they know him. He knows his own and they know him and he lays down his life for them. Like Psalm 139, I think, speaks beautifully of how the shepherd knows us. It says, You know when I sit and stand, you understand my thoughts from afar, my travels and my rest. You mark with all my ways, you are familiar. Even before a word is on my tongue, Lord, you know it all. 
behind and before you encircle me and rest your hand on me, my very self you knew. Someone very spiritual wrote, it's hard to overemphasize what a tremendous privilege it is to be known personally, intimately, lovingly by the Son of God. It is a gift that also includes eternal life. Jesus loves us from the inside, personally. He knows each and every one of your struggles, each and every one of your difficulties, your challenges, your, your deepest longings and desires, some things that you can't even express yourself. He knows when the relationship began, how it's to develop, all the doubts and hopes. He knows us from the inside. He knows our hearts. And so that means, even with the person that's closest to you and you can't seem to get them to understand what you're going through, you can go to Christ. And I think a lot of times that's the last person we go to. When after years of marriage, a spouse still doesn't understand why coming to Mass for you and hearing scriptures and receiving the Eucharist is so important, Jesus understands. Or when others wonder why you're not over grieving yet somebody that you love so much, Jesus doesn't wonder. He knows your heart. He knows your soul. And when you can't even explain to yourself why you're, you just can't find it in yourself to forgive someone who has hurt you, maybe insulted or abused, abandoned you, Christ knows that pain and is already working for healing and freedom. And so Jesus loves us from the inside, and that kind of love doesn't give us, you know, like this elderly couple you know, um, speed to our steps or make our lives any easier. It doesn't assure us that every good thing we attempt will be successful, but this kind of love that knows us intimately from the inside and faithfully, think back now to this couple crossing the street, the dangerous road, the good shepherd will hold on to us with a strength that nothing can break and will walk with us faithfully until we reach the other side. Let's uh, get out our green books and let's offer this song as a prayer uh, of the Good Shepherd. Psalm 681, or uh, page 681. I need you and I know you 
Angelic and Miguel Angel Gonzalez, Jaden Baez, and Tony Booth, and for our own personal intentions, which we now call to mind. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray for the soul of Jamel Rodriguez and the peace and consolation of his family. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Heavenly Father, thank you for hearing these, our prayers. We trust in your wisdom and your generosity. We ask them all through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. As our gifts are being prepared, please join us in singing our offertory hymn, number 622, in the Green Journey Songbook. and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always everywhere, to give you thanks and to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you, yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, 
even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice once more thanks gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin do this in memory of me Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise you forever and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let us pray to the Father in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father.
I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be saved. Please join us in singing our communion hymn number 791 in the Green Journey Songbook.
Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Seated for announcements. Our ushers will now take up a collection for our utility fund. Thank you for your generosity. Food sale after mass today, benefiting our charismatic renewal group is taking place. So please pay them a visit and purchase some of their delicious cooking. Parish security. We've been announcing for a few weeks the progress made with our security of our parish campus. So far, only a few individuals have turned in requests for badges and security codes for the new system. So if you have keys for any location of the parish campus, you are required to submit a form indicating what keys you have, what areas you need access to. So please submit your request online or through the parish office no later than today. If you do not submit this request by that time and attempt to access an area of the parish property, you will set off an alarm and the police may be called to investigate. St. Michael the Archangel Youth Group is having an overnight retreat on May 3rd and 4th called I Have Called You By Name and You Are Mine. Deadline to register is next Sunday, April 28th. So if, please call Sister Juana or one of the youth members if you have or are a youth interested in attending this. Next Saturday, April 27th, there will be no confessions at 3.30 p.m., so please make note of that. Anyone celebrating a birthday today or this coming week, please stand. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Any couples celebrating their wedding anniversary today or this coming week, please stand and share how many years with us. Any visitors today, please stand and be welcomed. Welcome, please join us again. Yeah, you might as well stand because we all know who you are already. <laughs> well, our Eucharistic minister to the homebound, please come forward. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us all in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Go oh, in the peace of Christ, alleluia, alleluia. singing our recessional hymn number 411 in the Green Journey Songbook. Alleluia, alleluia, let the holy anthem rise, and the choirs of heaven chant it in the temple of the skies. Let the mountains skip with 